Let's talk about fin material and what you should use on your model rocket. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'd like to talk about fin materials and all the variety that you can choose from. And spoiler alert, there's no best material. So now, if you've been in model rocketry for any length of time, you've probably seen a lot of these. Um, the most common is probably balsa wood. And here I have some balsa wood and I have some different sizes and I'll kind of go over them with you. Um, this is balsa wood, as I said, and balsa wood is a tropical wood that's grown in, you know, around the equator. So it's grown in Indonesia and in South America um, and it grows fast. Uh, balsa wood in seven years can be a hundred feet tall. Um, it's used in so many different things besides model rockets. It's used in boats, in giant windmill blades, it's used everywhere, uh, which is why they grow it everywhere. Um, the downside is, is because it comes from the tropics, there is a transportation cost to it. Um, so it can get a little bit expensive, especially when transportation costs go up. Um, here are like two sheets, and I wanted to point something out that's common with all wood, and that's what we call wood grain. Um, the grain is the directions of the wood fiber. So here on this piece of wood, you can see these lines right here. The lines run like this. That is the grain direction of the wood. Um, and the wood is generally strong when you go parallel to the direction. So if I try to bend it this way, it's pretty strong. But if I go, you know, a around the grain, um, I can bend it pretty far without it breaking. Um, so this is one type of wood grain, um, and it depends on how the log is cut from the tree or how the, how the sheets of wood are cut from the log of wood. So here, um, the sheet is cut like perpendicular to the edge of the log. Um, if you cut it across the log, kind of in a radial direction, you get this pattern. Um, and this has this beautiful pattern, but this wood is doesn't have the same grain structure. So it can't be bent as easily as this because the wood grain is going in, in a different direction. I think this is called A grain and this is called C grain. And if it's a combination of some A and some C, then it's called B grain. Um, so this stuff is really good for if you have to wrap around a part. Uh, this is good if you need generally st strength in all directions um, and not a lot of bendability. Um, but typically you're going to get a random selection of wood um, and they try to get it in mostly in this one direction so you can see which, which is your strong direction. Balsa wood um, is I think it's one of the miracle materials of, of fins. Um, strength to weight, which means how strong it is per how light it is, it is incredible. Um, it, it rivals, you know, the best carbon fiber stuff. The downside is, is it's not uniform. Um, you know, some parts of might be stronger than others. And so you have to be a really good craftsman to use it if you want the highest strength to weight ratio. But in general, for most model rocket kits, um, balsa wood is used a lot. Um, again, it's very lightweight, which means our rockets can go high. Um, and it's relatively cheap. It's not that expensive. Um, and it also, it shapes easily. I mean, you can cut it with a knife, you can sand it, you can use a wood plane. It, it's easy to work with, and that's its nice feature that balsa wood has. Uh, balsa wood comes in a lot of different sizes. Um, so here at Apogee, we sell uh, the different sizes. What I showed you was 1 32nd inch. This is 1 16th inch. This is thicker. It's um, 3 16ths, and this is quarter uh, eighth inch. <laughs> 
Um, no, this is 3 seconds, and this is an eighth inch. Um, so you can see it comes in different uh, thicknesses depending on how strong you need. And that's the ultimate question is how strong do you need to make your fins? And the answer is strong enough. You know, what is strong enough? And this takes a little bit of learning as you're building rockets. Um, you get kind of a feel for it generally what size thickness you need for the strength. A lot of the rockets that we sell here at Apogee, we go a little bit thicker. Um, this is eighth inch, so that's this right here. Um, that generally for this size rocket, it gives you nice stiffness. It's, it's easy to work with. Um, and one of the things about fins, especially something like this, is you have to glue it on the edge um, and having a thicker edge means it's easier to glue. So gluing a 16th inch piece of wood on a, on a rocket tube is harder than gluing a thicker piece. And that's why we sometimes might want to use thicker pieces of wood. Um, in general, you want the wood grain on your rockets to follow the leading edge. So this is the leading edge. Leading edge means it leads the edge of the fin into the sky. So this is the leading edge, this is the trailing edge. This right here is called the root edge. It's kind of like a tree and this is, um, the roots go down into the, the ground. So this is the ground, here's the tree and the roots go in there. So this is the root edge and then this is the tip edge. So we want the wood grain, remember I said it's the, the, the grain direction of the wood. Uh, we want that running parallel to the leading edge. So the wood grain is going to be going in this direction on this fin. And that gives you the strongest fin. And that goes for any type of wood that you use on your rocket. Always have the wood grain going into the, towards the tube. So parallel with the leading edge. So that's always a good rule of thumb. Um, okay, so our next option for wood is basswood. Um, now basswood is, um, it's a domestic wood, which means it's actually grown here in the United States. So there's a basswood tree. Um, and it has a beautiful flat surface finish. Um, so it's, it's grain is tighter. And so the wood is denser, which means it's gonna be a little bit heavier, but it's also stronger, but strength to weight ratio, so how strong it is for how much it weighs, balsa wood is better. Um, so this you would use where you're not so much concerned about weight. Um, so you can use something that's a little bit more dense. Um, and the other advantage is that it's a smoother surface so it finishes easier. Uh, on this rocket right here, um, I don't know if you can see this, but I got my wood grain and you can actually see the grain of the wood because it wasn't finished properly. Means by finishing, we mean we need to fill all the nooks and crannies with a filler that, that smooths out the surface and then it's gotta be sanded to get rid of all that. So wood grain will show up and this is balsa wood um, on basswood it's much tighter, so you do a lot less finishing or sealing that surface because the wood grain is so much tighter. And like balsa wood, um, it comes in different thicknesses. Again, this is um, this, this is an eighth inch. This would be 332nd inch. Um, again, it's just the thickness of the wood. Okay, so that is the most common. We like basswood um, here also for scale rockets because we want to do less finishing on scale rockets. The downside is, is because, because it's more dense, it's harder to cut. Uh, you can still cut it with a hobby knife, but you're going to make multiple passes into the wood to cut it. Um, once you get, you know, thick, then you probably want to use woodworking tools like a saw or a coping saw if you have to go around corners. Um, 
that's a disadvantage for anything that's hard. Um, balsa wood is, is just so easy to work with. That's why I say it's kind of a miracle material. Um, things that are also wood but don't look like wood is paper. Paper is a wood product. Uh, this is cardboard. Um, you can see it's got thickness and um, it's got a very nice smooth surface. Um, the downside is it it's, tends to be weak, uh, but it also has a wood grain direction. And, it, and that's primarily because of how they make paper. Um, they, they chop the wood up into fibers and then when they start rolling it around on their machinery, the fibers kind of gravitate into one direction. And so it does have a little bit of a grain. And so you kind of have to bend it a little bit to find out which way it's stronger. And then you want this. So if it's stronger this way than this way, um, this I want to use this as kind of like my root edge. Um, so that um, bending this way would be harder. Um, cardboard can be used on rockets. It's used on a lot of rockets. Um, Here's our rocket as an example that uses cardboard that's made from the paper tubes of a rocket. And uh, even though they're flexible, they're strong enough, which is what I said, <laughs> is how we kind of like choose which material. Strong enough is good enough. Um, so that is paper fins. Um, and then you can have a combination of paper and other materials. So this is foam core. So on, on the outside, we have sheets of paper that are glued to it. And then on the inside, it's foam. Um, and it's the paper that gives it the strength. The foam doesn't give it any strength at all. It's very low density. Um, and because you, in order to make it stronger, you have to make it thicker. So you have to put more foam in it to give it, you know, uh, it's called moment of inertia. You have your bending moment. And you know, the thicker the material, the stronger it will be. Um, this is also used for fins. It's cheap. It's like uh, better than balsa wood as far as price goes. Um, but it's, it's not very resilient. You know, you can crunch it pretty easy. Um, so you can only use it on rockets where you're not, too worried about it getting crunched. Um, you know, you can flatten it out, but when you flatten it, you're you're crushing the foam, and because you're you're making it thinner, you're losing strength. Um, but it is a, a material that's used often in rocketry, and give it a try. I think you know it has some nice qualities. Again, it has a beautiful surface finish, so there's a lot less uh, sealing that needs to be done. Um, so, and it shapes easily. You can cut it, you can sand it, and it works really well. Um, so that is foam core. Um, and then if you need a little bit more strength, um, then you might consider plywood fins. Um, so here I have some samples of plywood. Um, so the most common is probably one eighth inch plywood and it's made out of birch wood and plywood is unique in that it's made out of layers of wood so what they do on the to make it is they they roll the log and then they put a blade across it and then they shave it and it comes out in these thin long wide sheets and then they can stack those sheets up um, but the cool thing is when they stack them, they can change the grain direction. And so you'll have grain going this way and grain going that way. And that makes it strong in all directions. Um, typically, um, this is a three-ply plywood. So there's three sheets of veneer that are glued up. So two are going this way. So you can see the grain direction. This one goes this way. And on this side, it also goes this way. But the one in the middle, which you can't see except for looking on the edge, goes this way. So which is the strongest direction? 
Well, the ones that go this way, there's two layers of that versus one layer of this. So it's stronger this way. So if I tried to bend it this way, it's very strong. But if I try to bend it this way, it has a lot more bend to it. Um, so you have to look at the plywood and count the number of layers. You can get plywood with five layers of wood in there. And at that point, it's pretty strong in almost all directions. Um, and then you can go thicker. This is also three layers of wood. Um, this is quarter inch thick. Again, this is eighth inch. Um, the hard thing about plywood is that it's harder to cut. You know, now we're definitely gonna need woodworking tools to cut it. Um, it's very dense and because it's got grain growing in all directions, it's harder to cut. Um, and because it's denser, it's harder to shape. So if you tried to sand an airfoil into this, you're gonna be working a long time. It's better to have power tools like a belt sander or something like that if you need to shape it. The cool thing about plywood is you can get it in large areas. You can see, you know, compared to that balsa, it was in sheets that were about three inches wide. Here, this sheet originally started at five feet by five feet. And, you know, you can go to the hardware store, you can buy four by eight sheets. So you, if you need a big part um, and you only want to make one fin, that's the way to go. You know, like, on, on this rocket right here, this is a pretty big fin, but it's made out of three pieces of wood. I got one piece of wood right here, I got one piece of wood right here, and then one piece of wood right here. Um, with plywood, I could do that in just one sheet. Um, it would save a lot of time. So that's another advantage. Again, like the, the basswood, it has a very tight grain, so it, it, there's not a lot of surface finishing to do. A lot of times you can just sand it with some 400 grit sandpaper and then just spray paint it with primer and then sand the primer and it's ready to go. Um, it's, it's glass smooth. Um, so now plywood, as I said, comes in various thicknesses. These are the thicker ones. The, you know, quarter inch would probably use for a high power rocket, like an H motor or bigger, H, I, J, K. Um, you'd probably use quarter inch, um, eighth inch, you would probably use F engines, um, F, G, and maybe some H's um, can be used eighth inch plywood. Um, you can go smaller or thinner than that too. Um, here are three sizes that are thinner. So this is 1 64th inch plywood. And you can see it's very bendable this direction but not so much this one. Um, the other disadvantage is as the plywood gets thinner, it's more susceptible to moisture and it can start to warp. Um, so you have to worry about that. And if you would make a fin out of this, you'd probably have to um, flatten it first. Um, so that's um, 164th, this is 132nd, and this is 116th. Um, so you can see we make fins out of all of these, except for the 1 64th. That's it's so thin. Um, you can see here I was cutting centering rings out of it because it, you can also be used for centering rings because you have the grain going in multiple directions. This is actually three plies of wood. You got your outside layers of veneer and then there is actually a thin layer in between. It's, it's very interesting stuff. Okay, so that is part one of this series. I think I'll do another one covering some more exotic materials that we use in model rocketry for fins. So um, we'll see you in part two, but until then, may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, may all your rockets fly straight and true.